When I was 21, I answered seven pages worth of deep, probing questions about myself. It was an application to B-School. Under the question that said, list three of your key traits in single words, I toyed with logical, decisive and resilient. I did not even consider saying ambitious. In my interview, when the director of the college asked me, why do you want to study marketing? I said, because CEOs are always marketing or finance people and I have a plan. In my first week, I organized the class elections, I lobbied with the seniors, I networked with everybody and I stood for the role of class representative. In my speech, I said, I want us to be the batch that puts us in the top six, changes things for this college. I lost. Three votes to 47 to a girl in pink who said, I hope you like me. <laughs> a month later, I auditioned for the Culturals Committee and they sent me loose on the campus festival circuit as college singer. 500 students from 20 colleges vying for prizes in fashion, music and drama. I registered for the Bollywood singing contest, murmuring my favourite chart cluster under my breath and when they asked for my song, I said, Chand tare You can't sing that, they said, that's a man's song. And then he moved on to the next contestant. So instead, I picked a very safe song, a Lata Mangeshkar one that said, Squeezing diffidence and patience that I did not feel into the notes and I won because the judge liked the movie that it came from. <laughs> At the next festival, I brought on the teachings of a sex teacher to the stage with And I lost to Tanhai. You see, college music is politics. Audience applause changes everything and the crowds, they like broken hearted boys more than girls who know their sexuality. So stage after stage, I ran the entire circuit singing classical mujras and love songs like everything from to and still my voice made no inroads into the audience's hearts or ears. The last festival of the year was hosted by my own college and the committee, given up on me, did not even bother asking me which song I was going to sing. I stepped up onto the stage and I looked up into a crowd that I'd seen 25 times that year. <laughs> Friends who knew the smell of my stage fright. My knees shake. Classmates who had borrowed my notes, people in other colleges who had lost the last seat that I had taken, my competitors, my rivals, people who had defeated me, people I had disappointed. I blinked and then they transformed into audience. I forgot about all my Carnatic music training and all the riyas that I had done and all my thwarted hopes of stardom. I took a deep breath and I remembered fun and I started with Tu My refrain was drowned in a roar so loud people were looking out of buildings thinking whether they should call the police. By the time I finished, the audience was up and dancing, I kid you not. And I ran back into a crowd that had become my own, bonded over a raunchy, raunchy bar singer's invitation, bottles clinking. That song went on to become the anthem of my batch. The only batch in 20 years to have an anthem. So you can catch a dream in lots of ways and maybe it took the sound of clinking glasses to shatter a glass ceiling and take me over the cusp of ambition into, why not, 